can't survive if you're like everyone else. The world is full of unlimited competition. Restaurants with a unique menu are popular among customers now, but taste alone can't do the job. Let's take a journey to the best restaurants with new and different ideas. A mixture of the Orient and the West. This is Istanbul, Turkey. There is a famous food here with another unique combination. Huh? These people are eating a sandwich crouched on the street. All of that talk of a unique food? It was just a sandwich? People just love this sandwich. The secret? Mackerel. It's a mackerel sandwich. It's extremely popular in Istanbul. You just have to have one when you smell the mackerel. Mackerel, fresh tomatoes and onions on baguette slices. That's it for a mackerel sandwich. Well, what do you do about the bones? The bones are removed just like that. A perfect combination of delicious mackerel and fresh vegetables. How is the taste? The sandwiches are fresh because they make them on the boat with fresh caught mackerel. The cost of this sandwich is only $1.50. It takes seven seconds to make one. But they have to make them quickly. They sell as much as 800 sandwiches at lunchtime. Is that a human being or a machine? You can barely see his hands move. More than a thousand people eat this sandwich every day. Is it that good? If it's bland for you, just sprinkle some salt. Mackerel sandwich. Oh, it's really good, really good. Innsbruck, Austria is a beautiful, peaceful city. It looks like a futuristic city, but the city also presents nostalgia. What special things are here? If you want to take a journey back in time to 800 years ago, go to the restaurant of the medieval knights. Oh, you surprised me. You're so tough. People didn't use forks in the medieval ages. You may only use a knife here. When the head knight gives an order, a feast begins with a glass of honey wine. Bottoms up like a medieval knight. Oh, that's good. The unique atmosphere made this restaurant a noted spot of Innsbruck. Ich fühle mich jetzt ganz gut. Und jetzt kommt noch ein Essen dazu, das ist ja viel zu viel. Aber mit einem Schnaps wird das schon wieder gehen. This isn't just an imitation of the 13th century. The restaurant was actually open 800 years ago. They even cook exactly like they did in the medieval times. This is uh, real night food. Mm. Your life. Yeah, it's real. Righteous knights, let's drink and enjoy the feast. The head knight gives another command and they begin to eat dinner. Being a medieval knight, everything tastes good. They just break off pieces of hard rye bread. It's great! The meat eaten with just a knife is good, too. The food is simple and plain, but it's fun to experience the past. The leftover food is cleaned up. The place is always full with people who want to become knights. 
viele Feiern, Hochzeitsfeiern, Geburtstagsfeiern, äh, andere Anlässe, Hochzeiten und so weiter und so fort. Und es ist schön, einfach einmal was anderes bieten zu können wie die anderen Lokale. This is another unique place of Austria. Thousands of seats outdoors are crowded in the middle of the day. What do they sell? Beer. We can't live without beer. Austrians really love beer. They have 500 milliliters every meal. Everything is self-service here. The customers choose their own mugs from a variety of types. The cost varies from $3 to $5 depending on the size. There's something they do right after they pay. It is a custom to wash the mugs before they drink. Just how dirty are the mugs? The long line of people shows how popular this place is. The beer is brewed with a technique of 350 years. But the real secret to the popularity is the beer cask. A new 220 pound cask is opened every 20 minutes. The beer is fresh. Just put a new tap on and let some air out. The employees are busy all day getting new beer for the customers. Hopfen und Malz, Gott erhalts, ist der älteste Spruch in ganz Österreich. Und das kommt in diesem Glas zusammen. Hier vereinigen sich Himmel und Erde. He's impressed with the taste. Careful, you'll get drunk. The secret to the wonderful taste is in the underground storage. This place used to be a monastery. They still use wooden casks to maintain the taste that the monks created. They maintain an appropriate temperature here and bring a new cask every 20 minutes. Where there's beer, there's food. Let's see what they eat. It's almost like a buffet. You can have whatever you like. These side dishes are good enough to constitute a meal. There's so much. Mm, wow. <laughs> the employees are busy all day to serve the thousands of customers. Some only peel radishes all day. The cost of a sausage is, oh, $3.30. Because the food is expensive, some people bring their own food. They even bring a cutting board to slice their pickles. Will they get kicked out for bringing their own food? No need to worry, the owner allows that. This place will place their bets just on the taste of their beer. And the poor people, they bring in their own food with, they picking up the beer there, they have to pay for the beer. But you can bring your own food and the families which have a lot of children, they can also come here because you have nothing to pay for eating. The rich and poor all have the right to enjoy beer. Austrians claim those rights of equality. The journey leads us to Denver, United States. It's quiet, but there's a restaurant that bustles about. It's the best place to enjoy the heat of the night. It is crowded with people waiting for a table. They even have a slide for people to enjoy while they wait. What can be so special for people to wait like this? There must be something special about the steak here. That's the secret to the popularity? Not at all. This restaurant is popular because of a fun and unique event. Some lawbreakers in there. To the The secret is neckties. If you wear one, they cut it off. This event is becoming more and more popular. If they cut your necktie, you get a free beer. So everyone wears all sorts of ties to the restaurant. <laughs> that looks expensive. Isn't that a waste? They just cut away here and there. Just how many do they cut in one day? Stop shaking that. Uh, today, about 16. 16. Uh, no, no tightness. 
in here. So we want to be able to loosen our tie, relax a little bit, have a good time. So they cut the tie off, you know, they can't wear it in here, they gotta loosen it before they come in. So that's the whole idea. Beautiful women come dressed up and wearing ties. This informal atmosphere will make people dance. People dance wherever they want to the music. They relieve their stress like this. Come on, everybody, dance. So we decorated ties for our dates. Oh. Like mine said stud muffin, and they cut the muffin off, so now it just says stud. So it's oh. funny <laughs> for my, my date. Get rid of authority, and you'll see freedom. Desires to escape from daily life attract people here. Modern life is full of stress, but unique restaurants with special foods and events are refreshing in life. Let's hope there will be more places that will provide energy in our lives for everyone to enjoy. Water is life, and the Dutch develop water resources. See how much they love water and nature through their boat, hotels, windmills, maritime museum, and seal protection. Let's journey to Holland and take a look at the water culture. The Netherlands is a country that had a battle with water. There are houses along the canal, and they are very close with water. It is a familiar sight to see a boat slowly enter along the vast ocean. Water taxis and other boats are the most common means of transportation. They take pride in the world's greatest vessel culture. You can easily see signs you see on land, like no parking, and people are familiar with the maritime traffic signals. In Amsterdam, a dock is more common than a parking lot. Um, well, it used to be a lot cheaper than houses, but uh, the prices are about the same now. Pirates were said to have lived in the Netherlands. There are many boats there. The gulls cry and boats move about leisurely. We headed to the Maritime Museum by boat. You can see the maritime culture there. Only made one trip. It went away from Amsterdam, then Helena, moved over to England, came into a storm. And... The museum takes pride of the history of various boats. The boats that sailed to America and Australia long ago are still preserved. The huge world map shows the pioneering Dutch history. They are proud that they sailed to unknown lands. The ocean is vast and there are many routes. This city is very important. Amsterdam is mm. quite important, and also the people who live there. What we see next is a boatel. This is a hotel made of a boat. There is a neat kitchen inside, and the interior is very practical. After that, the, the rich people know mm. what kind of freedom you have. Oh. So you don't have anybody upstairs. Above. Does it have everything you need? Yes, including electricity and even fax machines. The bedroom. Bedroom? Yeah. Don't look at the... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of wind. Uh -huh. then, but if the, the ropes are fast, uh -huh. very fast... They make sure the river isn't polluted. It's their way of protecting the water. Um, England. England. Yeah, near London. Oh. So, yeah, no, it's, it's good. But yeah. Windmills represent Holland. Thanks to the wind that blows all the time, there are 8,000 windmills in Holland. Windmills might look romantic from a distance, but they are very powerful up close. Put some stones into the grinding stones and it turns into powder momentarily. Depending on the use of the grinding stones, the wings of the windmill are different. I'm from 1950. What do you make 
there's oil out of peanuts, huh? The windmills have different uses. Grind peanuts for 30 minutes and you get powder. The grinding stones just crush the peanuts. They shovel up the powder and then they dry it well by a fire. The dried powder is wrapped in a sack and then pulled by a pulley. Peanut oil is made. It's 100% peanut oil. Oh, it smells so savory. Different things are made here. Brown, yellow and blue stones. What are they making? Uh, you sell it, we sell it to artists who make paintings. Uh -huh. And sometimes they use it for restoration of old paintings as well. Being a trade city, people of all countries are here. They could have an ethnic exhibit. The people respect diversity and teach the young to think rationally. This is the Science Museum Nemo. You can learn scientific principles easily. It was established by the Queen in 1991. The museum is always crowded with excited children and their parents. Being a country of canals, the children are experimenting on how to navigate boats. The children dock the boats and learn about direction and space. Yeah! Technical supply for him. Interesting. This place makes science fun for children. When they hit a board, a chair spins. And a ball rolls. Children learn the principle of a pulley. The instructor teaches the children by doing fun performances. Because science is, uh, for some people, it's something uh, which is uh, for universities and for institutes. But in here in Nemo, it's just a thing you, uh, you see every day. Let's head for Peterburen in northern Amsterdam. There is a seal nursery here. It was established in 1960 and run by donations. It's mealtime, the menu is soury. Each seal eats nine pounds of soury every day. Come and get it. The pretty eyes shine even more when they see food. There's one which can't open one eye. And that one has a little bit of an eye up. Oh, like the bird? Oh. They picked oh. him in the, oh. in the eye. There they come again. The gulls come at the seal's mealtime. Is that seal trying to chase them away? How cute! And this is the picture of the first seal, eh? in, the, in the garden, in the little tub. Uh... The place began by treating one seal. Since then, residents donated money to maintain the center. Seals look tame but they are still wild and refuse human touch. They are not so easy to deal with. They put vitamins and medicine in the salary for the seals who refuse food. Breeding area of the fish. They do their best to protect the seals. If a seal has a problem in the esophagus, they feed it through a hose. If a seal is new, they take a skin sample to check for diseases. Then they are treated. Don't move. It's for your own sake. This seal is sick, but it will be well soon. The people here bring seals that are about to die because of pollution to receive treatment. The seals are treated for two to three months and then sent back. It is their wish to see the seals swim freely in the ocean. The seals are discharged today. They have to say goodbye now. They remove the water in the pool and put the seals in boxes. The seals run away and exhaust the people even before they leave. 
We're not playing tag. It takes a few people to grab a seal and put it in the box, but the seal gets away again. The foster parents who donated money are all here today to see them off. Last year, eh? We were last year here in the, in the center and uh, well, they told us that there's a possibility to, uh, to do something for the nature and uh, well, when you are... The seals must know they're going home. Their eyes are shining. The seals are loaded up and head for the North Sea. The nature, giving them the freedom. Yes, for the green seals but also for us. Then the best way is always to live in freedom. The van heads for the North Sea. The seals are headed for home. Terschelling Island is an hour boat ride from Peterborough. You smell now the salt and the sea and the area, you know, back to the nation. Yeah. <laughs> the seals are returned to sea four to five times a year. The foster parents come to see them off. There is even a special truck to move the seals. The foster parents can't hug or touch the seals. All they can do is take pictures and say goodbye. Bye, baby. The jeep heads to the Terschelling coast, the seals' home. About 250 seals live here, and the seals seem to sense their friends. They are excited that they're going home. The foster parents are sad. But they make a toast. For the health of the seals, cheers. Cheers. The six seals are all healthy now. They rush off to their home. They are happy to be back in nature. They slowly go in the water to adapt and quickly become familiar with the ocean. It's been so long since they were here. It's cozy like a mother's embrace. They look peaceful and high in spirit as they go home. In Asia, and I think when we started now, uh -huh. then we have also a chance for the future. Way to go. The Dutch lived life with water. They have a long tradition of pioneering the water. They lead the maritime culture with a love for nature. Camels cross the desert. The desert is a land of death. Who lives in the desert and how? It is barren land, but there are people who dream of romance and happiness. Take a look at how the people of Egypt survive in the desert. This is Cairo, the capital of Egypt. Egypt has a history of 5,000 years. What comes to mind first? The greatest pride of Egyptians are the pyramids. They captivate tourists from all around the world. However, there is a friend you need to see the pyramids. That friend is a camel, the hero of the desert. Camels are strong in heat. It would be impossible to cross the desert without one. They all look similar, but there are different types of camels. Huh? A headless camel? Oh, that was a surprise. Let's find out more about these mischievous camels. This is a village that raises camels. Here, a camel. There, a camel. There are camels everywhere. There aren't any playgrounds. Any place with a camel becomes a playground. He seemed to ride that pretty well, but... Even the tame camels get angry when children tease them. Stop touching me! I'm tired! Stop teasing the camels. Mila. 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 Mm. 
Camels are treated better than people. Mules deliver the camel food. The mules carry more than the size of their own bodies. People and mules take care of the camels here. Hey, mule, we're hungry. Come on, hurry up. The poor mule runs with its short legs. One camel costs about $400 to $1,400. That's a whole year's pay for the people here. That is why camels are precious assets, more valuable than cars. There is a reason why Egyptian camels are so expensive. This is the camel's identification certificate. It shows the age, name, gender, health condition and breed. The cost of the camel depends on this certificate. Something else that proves its breed is this tattoo. This tattoo shows that this camel is one of nobility. Another quick way to check the health of the camel is to look at its teeth. You can see how strong it bites by putting your hand in its mouth. Camels, the heroes of the desert. What made them so strong in the desert? Here is the secret. First are the soles. They're soft like sponges, so they're good for walking on sand. Second are the long eyelashes, which block the sand and wind. There is hair on the ears to keep sand from getting in the ears. The body is equipped to block sand. The joints are also pretty high. If you look at a camel sit, it bends its four legs first and then bends its hind legs twice. Being precious assets, baby camels are valued even more. These are two months old. Children grow up seeing camels and camels are raised by people. They live life together. Maybe that's why they are alike. Now they eat similar foods? The camels grow with all this love. Eat a lot and grow a lot, okay? Bedouin live in the Egyptian desert. Bedouin means desert dwellers, and they've lived in the desert for generations. The sand is hot, but they walk around barefoot. Take a look at their soles. They're soft like camel soles, perfect for walking on sand. <laughs> Desert life depends on the souls. <laughs> it's not likely to have electricity. They use small candles at night. Okay, okay, now. It is a Bedouin tradition okay, to serve guests Good. well even if they have to starve. There are hardly any people in the desert, so they welcome guests with warmth. Because they are nomads, their way of cooking is simple. Their main staple consists of a bread they fry on a tava. There is music even in the desert. They don't have great instruments, but they enjoy music. Where there's music, there's dancing. The people dance. Do you know how romantic it is to dance in the desert? The night deepens. This romantic night will be remembered. This is a village an hour from Cairo. There are more donkeys and mules than cars. It almost seems like a scene from a movie. A family enjoys an outing on a cart pulled by donkeys. There is one thing that scares the people of this peaceful village. It is... Cobra. Cobra. Don't worry. The outlaw of the desert, Harim, is here. This is a desert wolf. Harim catches the animals that come to the village for the safety of the residents. There are all sorts of animals at this place. This is a gazelle. 
I'm a chameleon. Haram is really great, seeing that he caught me. In one corner, there are a bunch of lizards. These animals are all sent to zoos of other countries. في ناس بت يعني أنا جامد بس ما بيموتش. يعني العرب ما موت؟ لا العرب. What's in there? What's the big deal? He presses the paper. Just what is it? Don't stall. Show us. He carefully takes it out. It's a scorpion. It has a fatal sting, so you have to be careful. There's something scarier than a scorpion. Poisonous snakes. Haram goes into action. He makes the people feel safe and begins hunting. He battles with the snake. All he needs is this stick. He catches the snake in no time. The snake completely surrenders to Haram. The snake can't move. It seems to regret this trespass. Haram puts it in a sack and leaves. What are you going to do with the snake? Haram caught over a hundred snakes in one month. There are all sorts of snakes in the pit. He makes quite a bit of money by selling them. للتوريد للطالبة والدكاترة عشان يعملوا أبحاث وتشريح الضفادع والسحالي والفيران زائد إن إحنا بنودي دول الخارج برا. The most important task of a day is to go to the desert. He has hunted in the desert for 20 years. Scorpions and snakes run away when they hear his footsteps, but it's no use. Haram can catch them all. Scorpion makes a final attack when Haram stick presses it. It raises its tail and gets ready to sting. It's small, but it's very threatening. Scorpions are nocturnal and usually hide below rocks during the day. That's why you should always be careful of rocks in the desert. All you need to catch a scorpion is this paper bag. The scorpion tries to stay out using its claws. It's pretty strong. Scorpions are dangerous because of their poisonous sting. It could kill you on the spot. Haram removes the poison with no problem. This is how much poison there is. There is a sound in the silent desert. A snake appears and slides by. It is too quick for the camera to follow. It disappears with speed. However, Haram wouldn't miss it. Whoa! The minute Haram caught it, the snake bites him in his left armpit. Oh, Haram, are you all right? Snake no business, yes? This is Latwini. It's strong, but it's not poisonous. The mouth is crooked because the neck is being twisted. Oh, help me, help! Haram isn't looking for any snake. He's looking for cobras. He discovers a strange hole and begins to hunt for a cobra. Is there a cobra? It is a tense moment. Right then, a cobra follows the stick out. It seemed to come out quietly. But it begins to run. It runs in all directions. When a cobra gets excited, it raises its body and expands its neck. Haram tries to control it with his stick, but can't approach the cobra easily. A cobra's sting will paralyze your central nerves and kill you on the spot. No matter, even a cobra is caught in Haram's hands. Haram gives a smile of victory, holding the cobra. There is fatal poison in the desert, but there are people who live by nature's laws in the desert. 
All that can be seen is the sky, sand, rocks, and the sun. However, there is romance and hope. Education of children is important everywhere in the world. The schools of Nepal are changing. Educational opportunities are available for poor children. Nepalese education combines tradition and globalization. Bhutan gives everything to educate these children. He dreams of educational reform. Let's take a look. Kathmandu, Nepal was formed by the Himalayas. The educational environment isn't developed, but there are private schools that teach English. The children show up to school with backpacks. They have bright expressions. It is a new experience to learn. There are public schools in each village, but they don't provide proper education. Children have to wear traditional attire at Samata school. There are 1,500 students. It is the largest private school in Nepal. When the bell rings, the teachers head for the classrooms. Most of the teachers here are females. The children wait for the teachers in each classroom. All the children are learning English, so it doesn't seem very ethnical. But this school has the most ethnical program. They check homework and provide traditional education. Girls wear traditional female attire and boys wear traditional male attire. It's like Changatong in Korea. It's etiquette class for everyone. The children follow along to the orders. Etiquette class is one of the most important classes here. The different grades have different color clothes. They learn about manners even if they don't have a special event. Children in normal clothes also learn. More students come to school, but Utam controls them well. It looks like they're having gym class too. Six, seven, eight. The students range from 1st grade to 12th grade. However, they don't follow each grade by age. Some students start late like this, and some reach a higher grade faster. It's lunchtime. The entire neighborhood gets noisy. Children run out of the classrooms and mothers wait outside with their lunches. The children look for their lunches and their mothers, and the mothers look for their children. Everyone is busy trying to find their lunch. At lunchtime, brothers and sisters also meet. These two go to set a place for their lunch. The table is set, and the youngest gets his, too. They don't have a lot of food, but the lunch is prepared with care. 
Children without siblings eat alone, but lunchtime is always pleasant for everyone. They have to eat to go on. The younger children are fed like little birds. Eat a lot and grow up well. When their mothers don't come, the children buy lunch outside. They farm or work, but the mothers bring lunch for their children. For poor people, studying can feel like a luxury. Tuition is due today. The parents ask for a discount. The ledger is full of students who are behind in paying tuition. It's not a school day, but Utam heads somewhere. He goes to homes where parents don't send the children to school. He seeks out children who don't have the pleasure of learning and asks them to come to school. However, the parents don't know about that. They complain about their situation. Utam follows the child inside. The entire family lives in one room attached to a factory. They are pretty poor, but learning is more important than food. Utam is almost married to education. He calls places to receive donations for the school. Bayalis, Tiais, Charse, Chayatar. He is building three schools, but at first it began as voluntary services. It's a holiday, and he sets out to find more supporters. Today he goes to see a leader he respects, Odi. He is the greatest supporter of them all. It's always nice to have support. Today, Utam becomes a student. It is nice to gain information that could help the children. The great leader, Odi, tells him which direction Samata's school should take. And they're really blessing me always. They are really, uh, we can call him actually, he is a spiritual master. There are portraits of their ethnical leaders on the walls of the school. The school first began by a volunteer organization. They don't just teach the students here. They also check the health conditions and provide treatment. Utam used to direct movies, but since he began volunteer work, he decided he should do something for the children and built the Samata school. The children are full of fear as they head for the hospital, but they can receive treatment because they go to Samata school. They are able to receive treatment with the help of the Finnish ambassador, but Utam doesn't feel good seeing these sick children. He doesn't look happy. Learning is important in life, but health is the most important.
उन्नर को ट्रीटमेंट होस राम रो होस बने इच्छा लांसा ओके Bhutan is building three schools. They look like traditional homes. Children receive education at a low cost. He is a nationalist, but he has the children learn English. The children study in a crowded area, but they have large dreams. The school is built with traditional Nepal bamboo. Bhutan is very passionate about having the children embrace their country and the world. And uh, I want to establish one medical college for these children. Those who come to our school to study here, and he, uh, he must study in our medical college also. That's why I want to establish one new medical college for these children. Children are on their way to school. There is someone that always waits for them at school. Utam says namaste and always greets them with a smile. The children learn about the world from Utam and he learns about hope from the children. Utam shares the value of learning and loves tradition. Despite the difficult conditions, he continues to head for his dream. The power of Nepal and the future of the children are in his hands.